Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking and discussing the questionable form that the European champions Lyon have been on recently here on She Scores Bangers. So a common topic of conversation lately has been the kind of questionable form that Lyon has been on in the Champions League as well as the narrative of the amount of injuries that the squad is unfortunately still dealing with which is an interesting one to look into and the more you dissect it the more you realize there's a few problems other than just the injuries. So if you don't know already, Lyon is the most successful European club. They have won the most Champions League titles and have just been dominating women's football for quite some time now over the last five six years there has been a fair amount of teams that have come up to challenge them with the likes of barcelona chelsea wolfsburg rosengrand also had a great spell of challenging them but this year it looks like they might not even make it out of the group stages out of the last two group stages games they have scored two goals conceded six and only gained one point the list of injuries that they're dealing with is not something that can be brushed off you're talking about ellie carpenter out of hagerberg macario the Brits and Bach, I mean, those are just names that I'm naming on top of my head, but it's quite a lengthy one and I fear it might become a little bit longer now with Damaris who had quite a bad clash in the last game. There hasn't been any news about her assessment or the injury, but just based off how she got stretched off with ice and th the overall clash, it did not look too good. And so injury wise, it's not looking good. But if you are to assess how these players are performing both in the league and in the Champions League, you have to question that a lot of these players are out of form. In fact, the big question that I've been pondering on is, is it a loss of form that these players just cannot find? Or is it a lack of talent and simply not having enough backups and talent in that position? And I almost envision a Venn diagram where you on one circle have the positions that are lacking backups, they're lacking talent and the positions where the players that are playing in are out of form. There is going to be a good kind of corresponding overlapping in the middle, which tells me that it's a story of both injuries aside some of these major injuries took place before the start of the season i'm pretty sure the macario the ella carpenter all happened in june and the transfer window was wide open for leon to get replacement in that position now leon did not have a crazy busy transfer window if we are to really look at it they had a few players that were out on loan they finished alone and came back one of them is brun they also were able to get sarah de brits on free agency from psg who unfortunately is also out with an injury and vanessa jaws from the nwsl the canadian also a defender who just healed up from an injury she was available for the last game but did not play and let's be honest here leon can spend and rightfully so and players would die would absolutely love to play for Lyon. So if Lyon was out offering contract, I highly doubt that people or players would be turning it down. So the fact that they did not have a very busy transfer window considering the injuries that they already had going into the season is kind of concerning. So a lack of talent in some of these positions is, I mean, right there proving itself. Now let's talk about these players who are out of form in those positions. And I'm going to point out the biggest one in my eyes so far is Wendy Renard. What we're seeing right now is just shades of what Wendy Renard it, is really good at. Now, she is used to either playing alongside Buchanan, who has left Leon as well as in Buck also injured and so maybe her pairing is affecting her also usually ellie carpenter on the other end ellie carpenter is not there so she's playing with a different set of players but a player of her caliber a player of her experience you wouldn't expect to see these flaws mispositioning not pushing the ball how she usually should just overall kind of poor passes not reacting well to the press just stuff that you wouldn't see Wendy Renard do and this is not her being out of form just now she there was a few games in the years that i remember like looking at it and be like you know what? She's not playing her best game. She did have a slightly better game against Juventus. She also assisted Horan, if I remember correctly. But I want to see her a little bit more aggressive on these corners. I want to see her a lot more aggressive on these set pieces. Set pieces for Leon are like a match made in heaven. They're usually so, so good on set pieces and they have the height to do good on set pieces. Renard themselves just present a lot of issues when it comes to height on set pieces. And so I, you need to see them be a lot more threatening on that. Again, an area that they're showing to be a lot weaker than they usually are. Speaking of Millard, I want to say I'm quite shocked with the underwhelming performances that she's putting in because she is, she's young, but she's so, so good. We've seen her ability. She's one of the best kind of uprising French talents. She's making blunders that a, a number nine really should not. In the box, when they're sending in crosses, she is nowhere to be found in the right position. She is struggling to play on the shoulder. She just simple stuff, simple finishing, simple, just exactly what you want your number nine to do. She's not doing. She 
she's very out of form. She scored two own goals already, one in the Champions League, one in the league. It's it's kind of concerning. If I was Leon, I'd be a little bit concerned right now. Next game, next league game that I believe is taking place tomorrow, Bencher put Brune on to start. When Brune came on against Juventus, there was a lot more threatening attacks in the final third, and I think that is something that Millard has been lacking, which is not ideal. Since I just mentioned the league, I've been keeping a close eye on how they've been doing in the league, and it's not great. They've already conceded four goals in the last five games, which... I want to put this perspective. Last season, they only conceded eight goals in 22 games, which is a pretty good. It's a pretty good record. It's a pretty good ratio. So 22 games, eight conceded, pretty good. Five games, four conceded. That's already 50% of the goals that they've conceded last season gone in. It's not good. They've won all games, but that is simply because their quality and the talent that they have, just you know, the Malar, the Somer, the Horan, the Vendedonk. When you have a squad like that, I mean, even if you're conceding, you're expected to be scoring and winning. Granted, they have not faced Paris FC or PSG, which are the two teams right under them on the table, so likely if they are to go against them, it might present more challenges. Maybe they're not going to be able to pull up with a win. I looked... So domestically, they're already struggling, and actually between the Arsenal and the Juventus game, they did not have a domestic game in the middle, which was great preparation for them. They played the Arsenal game on Wednesday and had over a week, they had eight days to prepare for the Juventus game on Thursday. And were still not able to execute a good game plan. They did not seem to have a very good game plan. It was also a very, very physical game. I'm pretty sure that the game had over 20 fouls, something that you wouldn't see out of a French versus Italian side. <laughs> You'd expect the German side would, would be included in this, but very, very physical game. Game plan did not seem to be there. It lacked a little bit of creativity in the middle, and the starting 11, in my eyes, probably was not the best starting 11. They shifted some things around. They had Millard play in the ninth instead of La Somer. Came in, shifted the wing back. I don't think that was the smartest decision. This might be a silly question, but also the medical staff. I mean, you have seven players out with a knee injury. Like a knee injury? That's a pretty bad injury. The majority of them are ACLs and MCL. Putting aside Mbok, who was injured, out with the French team. So Mbok aside, Ada Hagerberg is dealing with a knee injury. Ali Carpenter, ACL. Macario, ACL. De Bruce, I also believe, is a knee injury. That's... It's an interesting trend to say the least that it's all new injuries within the same squad. Vanessa Giles, the Canadian, she needs to make her debut. She needs to start kind of crafting that pairing along with Wendy Bernard. I rate Giles highly, but I could also be a little bit biased because I'm Canadian. Because really, if you want to be the best team in Europe, if you want to hold that status, you need to dig deep. You need to be able to manage injuries well. I mean, hell, they went up against Arsenal, who not to take away anything from Arsenal, but also had their own injuries, but they managed their injuries slightly better than Lyon did. And that's kind of what tops the best team in Europe is that. You know, you're going to face obstacles, you're going to face a lot of these kind of annoying little thingies around. But what makes you the best team is that you're able to adapt well around them. You can manage them well, which they seem to be slightly struggling with. The last time that they were not able to win two consecutive Champions League games was back in 2015. That's like eight years ago. But one thing that was in common, actually, this is a fun fact, is that back in 2015, there was no Canadian in the back line. And now, in 2022, there's no Canadian in the back line, so it seems like they just need a Canadian in the back line to win them some games. I'm joking, I actually don't believe in superstitions like this, but just an interesting uh, point thing that I noticed. <laughs> Jokes aside though, I think the domestic games they have to win, it's going to install a lot more confidence, it's also going to get a momentum going for them, which is what they need. They don't seem to have momentum, momentum is crucial, they need some momentum going for them. They have Zurich coming up, and then the next fixture is going to be Arsenal. And then between the Arsenal and the next event, this like is also going to be a week of preparation. So they need to they need to take advantage of the fact that they have weeks, a, a, an entire week between some of these Champions League fixtures, which neither Juventus or Arsenal get. So will they get out of the group? It's going to be a very interesting story. Arsenal look like to be in a very comfortable position, which is great for the English team. Juventus, Joe Montenero, he's been doing great. They pulled a few upsets last uh, Champions League season. And honestly, if they can pull this one too, I would love an underdog story. I mean, maybe some of the Lyon fans would not be happy to hear this, but as a neutral, I think any neutral fan would love to see an underdog story. And if they can pull it against Lyon, you gotta give it up to Juventus, who also, by the way, had a great game against them. Again, anything that I'm saying right now is not to take away from how good Arsenal and Juventus have been playing. They came out, a very good game plan. Both of them ex executed it properly. Leon simply did not know how to react. 
it really that is the storyline is this an injury crisis is this a lack of talent is this a loss of form is it kind of a combination of all three of them is it a vent diagram with all three of them i by the way love venn diagrams i think they make everything so much easier that's why i imagined it as such but is it just an injury crisis is it a management issue there's a lot to talk about so please share your opinions down in the comments i love reading them and hearing them and having a conversation there with you guys as well as always to stay updated and to continue enjoying the beautiful game make sure you subscribe to us here on youtube and follow us on twitter and i will see you later